If you are looking for the best gaming monitor 2024, you've come to the right place. Welcome back to PC Builder, I'm Jason. In this best gaming monitor 2024 buying guide, we are gonna cover everything that you need to know to buy the best gaming monitor for PC or console gaming. And we are gonna provide specific product recommendations for 1080p, 1440p, and 4K to get you the best gaming monitor in 2024. If you get value out of this video, please give a like, this makes a huge difference to the channel. With that, Let's jump into it. The first thing that you need to decide to buy the best gaming monitor in 2024 is what resolution and frame rate or FPS you want to play at. Now there's three primary resolutions to decide on. There's 1080p versus 1440p versus 4K gaming monitors. While you can drop down the resolution on a monitor, it can never go above its native resolution. So you can't do 4K on a 1440p monitor, so choose carefully. The second thing to decide when buying a gaming monitor in 2024, how much FPS that you want to get, which is controlled by the refresh rate. Now refresh rate is the number of times per second that the screen refreshes the image and is expressed in Hertz or HZ for short. This number is the maximum FPS a gaming monitor can display. So if the monitor is 165 Hertz gaming monitor, which is a typical gaming monitor refresh rate, it can display up to 165 FPS. Of course, you also need a graphics card capable of pushing out that many FPS. And for console owners, the PS5 and Xbox Series X and S can only do 120 Hertz maximum. So keep that in mind and don't overspend. In 2024, gaming monitor refresh rates between 120 and 180 Hertz are mainstream. 240 Hertz gaming monitors are now common, even at 1440p and 4K. And some esports gaming monitors can do 360 Hertz all the way up to 540 Hertz. There's also the aspect ratio of your monitor, which breaks down into widescreen, ultra wide, and super ultra wide. Now, widescreen is the most mainstream aspect ratio at 16 by 9, meaning for every 16 pixels in width, there are 9 pixels in height. Ultra wide gaming monitors are 21 by 9 or 21 pixels wide for every 9 pixels in height. And super ultra wide gaming monitors like the Samsung Odyssey G9 are 32 by 9. The consoles only really support widescreen well, so ultra wide and super ultra wide are really just for PC gaming. So, what resolution is right for you? For PC gamers, it's all about your GPU and the types of games that you play. Even weaker graphics cards can push a lot of FPS at 1440p or 4K in easy to run games like Valorant, Fortnite, League of Legends, or World of Warcraft. While games like Cyberpunk 2077 or Hogwarts Legacy will strain even powerful GPUs at 1440p on high settings. As a general rule, if you want to play AAA titles at 4K high settings, then I recommend a performance level of an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4070 or AMD Radeon RX 7800 XT or better, and I recommend at least 12 gigabytes of VRAM on your GPU, but preferably 16. For AAA titles at 1440p, my general recommendation is a performance level of an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4060 Ti 16 gigabyte or AMD Radeon RX 6700 XT 12 GB or better, with at least 10 gigabytes of VRAM. But a lot of easier to run games will work just fine at this resolution on lesser hardware. For 1080p high FPS esports gaming, I would also recommend these as the minimum GPUs, but for standard 1080p gaming, anything down to an RX 570 will do. For a deeper dive, check out our monthly best GPU series that ranks the best used and new GPUs to buy right now and breaks everything down by resolution and frame rate. And as always, check the system requirements and recommendations for the games that you play. For console gamers, the good news is that all of the current gen consoles now support 1080p, 1440p, and 4K. For the Xbox Series X and PS5, you can choose any of these resolutions, and 4K 120Hz works just fine. As long as your monitor supports HDMI 2.1, it's fine for 1440p 120Hz with HDMI 2.0, and any new 1080p high refresh rate gaming monitor today will work fine for 1080p 120Hz. However, for the less powerful Xbox Series S, I would only recommend 1080p or 1440p. I have a dedicated console gaming monitor video, which I'll leave linked down in the video description if you're looking for a deeper dive. Let's talk panel type, because there's been some big changes in 2024. PN panels remain old older technology with worse visuals, but because they allow the absolute fastest refresh rates, you'll find them on the ultra high refresh rate 1080p esports monitors like the ASUS 540Hz monitor. A huge change in 2024 is VA versus IPS, where IPS is now dominant in the mid-range and higher-end LCD monitors with its more accurate color, while VA panels with their better contrast are now found primarily in budget gaming monitors, with the exception of a couple 240Hz 1440p monitors like the Samsung G6. But the biggest change of 
all is OLED gaming monitors have completely taken over the high end with their incredible contrast, near instantaneous response times, and far superior HDR. Meanwhile, the OLED downsides like pixel burn-in have been significantly mitigated through the use of new technology, making OLED the panel of choice for high-end gamers. Moving over to response times, Response time is the time it takes a pixel on the screen to go from one color state to another, and it's expressed in milliseconds. Low response times are important because it means the gaming monitor is faster and helps avoid what's known as ghosting, when fast moving images leave trails as they move across the screen. Unfortunately, most manufacturers list one millisecond response rates, which are largely nonsense, except on OLED monitors. And the only way to get an accurate number is through a third party review that actually tests it. My advice, just ignore response times listed by retailers or manufacturers. If we mention response times in our recommendations, it means the number has been verified by a source that we trust. AMD FreeSync versus NVIDIA G-Sync. In 2024, it's no longer a complicated subject. Now, those are the brand names for variable refresh rate or VRR for short, and that just syncs your PC or console's graphic output with a monitor refresh rate to prevent screen tearing. In 2024, any modern NVIDIA or AMD Radeon GPU will be able to use VRR with either AMD FreeSync or NVIDIA G-Sync monitors using a DisplayPort cable. Similarly, the PS5 and Xbox Series X and S have fixed their VRR issues, and as long as your monitor has some form of VRR and you're using the correct HDMI speed that we discussed in the resolution section, you're gonna be just fine. Curved versus flat monitors, exactly what it sounds like. Some monitors are curved, particularly ultra-wide and super ultra-wide aspect ratios, while others are flat. Folks who like curved gaming monitors often say it's much more immersive, which I personally agree with, but curved monitors may not be the best for desktop usage or tasks like video editing, so consider your use case. Monitor curvature rating is a number followed by R, and the lower the number means the monitor is more curved. So a 1000R monitor is more curved than a 1500R monitor. So what's the best gaming monitor 2024 for each type of gamer and budget? Well, if you have around $100 to $150 to spend, it's an easy choice as only 1080p gaming monitors are really available to you, but they do come in 24 and 27 inch sizes. If you have around $200 to $250, the fantastic news is that mid-range, high refresh rate 1440p gaming monitors have plummeted in price. Similarly, those PC gamers looking for 240Hz or higher refresh rate 1440p monitors can find offerings between $300 and $500. For those looking to step into 4K, you can currently do so for right around $380 to $500 US for a good quality 27 or 28 inch 4K 144Hz or higher refresh rate monitor. Finally, we have OLED panels, which now come in 1440p 240Hz 27 inch widescreen panels starting around $800 US and 1440p ultra wides coming in around that same price. 4K OLED monitors at 120 Hertz are still available for around $700 US with 240 Hertz 4K OLEDs launching later in 2024, though you're gonna need a quite powerful GPU for those. All my recommendations are listed down in the video description and they're based on current US pricing and availability at the time of recording. As new models launch, we'll evaluate them and list them in the description below with a link if we think they're good deals and we'll remove anything that goes out of stock. Let's jump into the best cheap gaming monitor 2024. Remember links to everything are down in the video description. What do I mean when I say best cheap gaming monitor? Well, I mean, these are like 102, $140, depending on the quality. And last year, these monitors would have cost you more like $200. That's where the market's gone. Let me give you my absolute favorite one. These are gonna be great for either console or PC gaming at 1080p. Console, you will get 120 Hertz at 1080p here. The BenQ Mobius EX240 is my top pick. This is probably the best performer right now, especially given a $140 price is pretty insane. It's flat, it's IPS, again, 165 Hertz, Obviously, console folks who get 120 AMD FreeSync on it. Overall, this is one of the best performing monitors out there. There's also the EX240N. That's a VA panel, a little cheaper, but also not really adjustable stand. I would skip that unless it's super cheap and I go with this instead. A couple alternatives if that one's sold out or just you can't find it in your market. The Pixio PX248 Prime Advance, also very, very good panel. Now, this is 144 hertz. There's the Pixio PX248 Prime S that overclocks this panel a little bit and you get a 165 hertz refresh rate, but it's like $150. I would go with this one instead, especially if you're looking to save a little bit of money, you're not gonna miss that extra 15 hertz, especially at 1080p. So this is a phenomenal one, AMD FreeSync Premium on it. Again, IPS flat, 
two thumbs up. If you're open to buying a VA curve panel, another good one to look at often goes on sales, the AOC C24G1A, $129. Not gonna say too much about it. VA does have better contrast. So some people do like that more. Some people like the more curved monitor. It's not a very aggressive curve. It's 1500R. But again, especially when it goes down to like $129, it's good to take a look at. Let's jump into the best. 1080p, 240 hertz or higher refresh rate. So this is your 1080p eSports gaming monitors. And you're looking to spend here about $100 150 up to about $300, but really no more than that because 240 hertz, 1440p starts just a little higher than that. And I would recommend that instead. But if you're looking to play esports competitive shooters on a budget and you want max frame rates, AOC 27 G2Z, it's a 27 inch, it's 1080p, absolutely phenomenal panel on this one. And it's $172. Now it's curved, it's VA. I'll have some flat IPS in just a second. But honestly, if I were in this budget range, this is what I would pick up. Speaking of flat IPS, the one I do recommend, Asus Tough Gaming VG259QM. This continues to be my top recommendation. This is the 24 and a half inch version. There's also a 27 inch version. Sometimes it sells for a little bit less. 249 is usually what this goes for, and it's a really, really good pickup. For those of you who absolutely have to have an Asus ROG Strix monitor, here you go. This is the XG249CM. Again, 270 hertz, so similar refresh rate right to the tough gaming monitor, slightly better color gamut on this one, slightly better kind of everything on this, but 299. So you're going to pay a little bit more of a premium on it. Jumping over the best budget, 1440p gaming monitor 2024. And remember, everything's linked down in the video description. I'm going to give you two recommendations here. And then honestly, the mid range is not that far away. But if you want to save some money, the ASRock Phantom PG27Q15R2A, terrible name, but great monitor, curved VA. So if you're looking for flat IPS, I got another one for you in just a second. But this is a phenomenal gaming monitor. And the only reason it's probably selling this cheap is because ASRock is virtually unknown in the gaming monitor space. And so they're a little bit cheaper to try and get some market share in there. It's got great features, like it's got a Wi-Fi antenna to it. It's got AMD FreeSync on it. Overall phenomenal panel, really, really bright as well, $184. My flat IPS alternative right now is the Acer Nitro XV271U, 271U, we'll talk about the 272U in just a moment, $199. Honestly, this has mid-range performance for $199, and sometimes it gets even a little bit cheaper than that. The only downside to this panel, it only gets to 250 nits of brightness. Now, most of the other 1440p mid-range panels I'm gonna show you go up to 300 nits of brightness. To me, it doesn't make a difference, but if you're somebody who has to have that extra level of brightness, I'd spend a little bit more money. Otherwise, save the money, pocket it, and get this for $199. Let's jump for the best 1440p gaming monitor 2024. Now this is the mid range. Remember everything linked down in the video description. Honestly, I, it's really hard to get away from our top recommendation in 2023. It's back in stock. That is the Acer Nitro XV272U. You're like, Jason, I, you just showed us this monitor, the XV271U. It's basically the same panel. It's just that this panel gets to 300 nits of brightness as opposed to 250. Otherwise, it's a fantastic motion handling, fantastic gaming, 300 nits of brightness is pretty much on par with all the other IPS panels you're going to see out there. So 219, this is so hard to beat and often goes on sale for even less. Let's talk about my alternatives in case that panel's just not in your region. I also like the MSI G274 QPF Dash QD. Now the Dash QD is the important part. That means this is the quantum dot version because there's a non-quantum dot version of this. I just don't think it's any better than the Acer panel. It's more expensive. I would go with this instead for 269. This has maybe slightly better color, slightly better motion handling than the Acer. They're very, very close. I don't think a human being would really be able to notice the difference. But if you're looking for an alternative, this is it. I know folks are going to ask, what about the Gigabyte M27Q, the M27Q Pro? It's very complicated right now. Gigabyte released a second revision to this monitor called the M27Q Revision 2. And it looks like that's where the Pro is going. Unfortunately, maybe the Pro will come back in stock. That would be the one that I absolutely recommend. I'm going to tell you the Revision 2 has worse motion handling. All it does is fix the BGR subpixel layout. So it increases the text clarity because it goes to RGB, which everyone's really familiar with. But in doing so, it loses some of its motion handling. And I really like the MSI monitor instead until Gigabyte gets this sorted out. Maybe in the middle of the year, we'll take another look. But what about those looking for the best 1440p gaming monitor in the mid range, but a more premium version, a more premium version. And they're not really that interested in 240 hertz. 
Honestly, there's really two monitors out there I would really focus in on. And the good news is they're not that more expensive. I would not spend more than $325 on them because 4K is not that far away. And 240 Hertz is honestly not that far, far away. But the two monitors I would focus in on, my number one choice really is right now, the LG 27 GP850B. There's also the GP83B-B. The only difference is the 83B-B doesn't have the USB ports on the back of it, so you, that you lose that functionality. Otherwise, the panel's identical to it. To me, not really that big of a deal. I'd probably just pick up the cheaper one. $299 right now. This is going to have superior color, superior motion handling. This is basically going to be kind of the creme de la creme right now of 1440p gaming monitors that don't hit 240 hertz. My other alternative to this, probably just as good, a human being probably could not tell the difference between the two, is the MSI MAG 274 QRF QD. This has continued to be my one of my top premium recommendations. Really doesn't change this year. I don't see anything out there that's not OLED or that, that's not 240 hertz that would cause me to, to, to shift away from this. 311 right now is starting to get a little pricier. I'd love to see this a little closer to $300, but honestly, you could take your pick between this and the LG, whichever you prefer. Let's jump with the best budget, 1440p, 240 hertz gaming monitor. And honestly, it, I wouldn't even necessarily consider this budget. I just know that a lot of people prefer flat IPS screens, but if you don't mind a curved VA experience, the AOC CQ27 G3Z, $289. Honestly, 1440p, 240 hertz has gotten so cheap. It's cheaper than some of the 1080p monitors that are 240 plus hertz out there. This is a pretty aggressive curve. It's very similar to the Samsung uh, G6 and Samsung G7, the older version, which I used to call the best gaming monitor on the planet, basically. Very, very similar experience to those monitors. Very super cheap price. Now, obviously, it's not identical, and you can still get the Samsung G6 slash G7. They're essentially the same thing. The G6 is the newer version, but those are like five, almost $500 for a 27-inch. This is a great value, especially if you're somebody who really likes contrast in those FPS games to be able to pick out differences uh, on the screen. So this is would be my number one choice for budget. Let's jump in the best 1440p, 240 hertz gaming monitor. Now we're gonna focus in here on LCD panels. LCD, we'll get to OLED in a while. There's a huge price gap though. So we're gonna stay with LCD and where everything's linked down in the video description. And here's the thing, I'm about to throw in rapid fire order four or five different panels at you. And I feel honestly, there's not a lot of difference between them. I would probably just take the cheaper one, but I'm gonna give you them in the order in which I would probably pick them if they're all identical prices. Let's start off with the LG 27GR83Q-B. Gosh, that mouthful, isn't it? This is a phenomenal panel, 240 hertz, 1440p from LG. Now, these are all gonna be flat and IPS. I think this monitor probably has the best feature set of all of them together. Slightly better motion handling at certain refresh rates, especially higher towards the maximum refresh rate of the panel. Really like the color on this one as well. 349 is a pretty insane price. If LG keeps this here, this is probably my top pick. The next one I would probably consider is the Gigabyte M27QX or M27Q-X. Right now on Amazon, it's just listed as the M27Q, which is actually wrong. Hopefully they fix that. But this monitor right now for 409, a little tough to recommend. I would probably go with the LG panel instead, just pocket that, what it was at $60 or something like that. Really not a lot of difference between this and the LG panel. I still really like it as long as the price gets down. Another fantastic 240 hertz, 1440p gaming monitor uh, introduced by MSI late last year. That is the G274 QPX. Again, is there enough of a difference between this monitor and the LG? At 349, I probably still lean towards the LG. If there's something about this monitor that you like better, go in this direction and said, honestly, I don't think you're gonna see that much of a motion handling difference between the two, uh, especially at this price point. Finally, the other one I would definitely consider, and this one has gotten down to $300, actually $299 over the Black Friday period in 2023, and we see it steeply discounted. I would not buy it for $429 right now. However, that this price fluctuates a lot, so remember to check those links in the video description. This is the HP 27QS. The HP 27QS 429 right now, don't buy it for that. Again, it's probably my fourth of four picks here, but still very, very competitive with the other ones. And when it hits 299, this is the one I would grab. Let's jump to the best. 1440p, 240 hertz, and higher refresh rate, 
OLED gaming monitors. Now, I just want to caution you, this is going to be the year of the OLED, and there are planned introductions of monitors at 360, even 480 hertz. There's one monitor coming for OLED at 1440p later this year. We are at a, a point of adoption of OLED technology. We're just beyond the early adopters, and we're getting into the mainstream kind of segment where a product really starts to take off and the prices come way down. You can see this right here. This is one of the brand new 360 Hertz, 360 Hertz, 1440p OLED gaming monitors. This is the Alienware AW2725DF. That's right, 360 Hertz. And these next generation of OLED gaming monitors are all gonna be slightly better than the previous generation that we saw come out last year. But here's the thing, you can continue to wait and every six months there will be a product that comes out if you already bought that will be better than one that you've already bought. And that will probably continue to be true for the next couple of years. So yes, you could certainly wait till the end of the year to buy an OLED game monitor. If that's what you want to do, absolutely, I support that. Just know that even if you do that, you're probably going to see six months from then another gaming monitor come out that's slightly better than that. So I would just go ahead and pick something up if you really want one. And this is the one that's available right now of the next generation. It's been tested. It's a phenomenal panel. It's got great motion handling to it. Not only does it have 360 hertz, but you get all the innate HDR goodness, it's baked into OLED that's just far superior to LCD panels, and it's $899, which is where the 240 hertz 1440p gaming monitors were. Speaking of those monitors, monitors, at least at the beginning of the year until we see these prices come down, I'll probably just caution you away from, although I expect these prices to drop. This is the ASUS ROG SWIFT, the PG27 AQDM. This is the 240 hertz version that came out last year that everyone went absolutely gaga for. I expect these probably to drop more than the 699-ish range somewhere in there. Maybe this one stays a little higher because this was probably the best out of all of them. I wouldn't buy this right now at this price, but if they do drop to around $700, that's probably a good price. Another good one to take a look at, again, probably wouldn't buy it at $746 right now. I'd wait till it to drop. That's the LG Ultra Gear model. Again, 1440p, 240 hertz. They fixed some of the innate issues that separated this from the ASUS model through firmware updates. So I, I feel like they're very, very close. The ASUS one just looks a little cooler in my estimation. I think it also still gets a little bit brighter. Remember, OLED brightness is not as bright as LCD brightness. It's just one thing you got to kind of steal yourself for. It's not bad. I use an, uh, an OLED panel all the time. Absolutely love it. And the text clarity is just absolutely nowhere near what it is with LCD. So this should not be your primary offer monitor, but if you're looking for gaming, these are great monitors. The one I might take a look at, again, $699 right now, is the Acer Predator X27U. This hat monitor had a lot of problems on launch. That's why it's so much cheaper than its competitors, even though it uses like the same panel as them. $699, this is probably where they're all going to drop to as these 360 hertz monitors start to roll out around that $900 uh, price point right now. This is a good pickup around $700, especially given that the firmware updates for these have largely solved most of those issues. This is a very, very good panel and it's still not quite as good as the ASUS, but for 200 bucks less, yeah, I would pick it up. Let's remember the best 4K gaming monitor 2024. Remember, check links down in the video description for current pricing and sometimes we have better deals come in. Let's start this off. I'm going to preface this by saying these are all going to be LCD panels and at least at the beginning of 2024, I would caution anybody away from buying an old OLED 4K gaming monitor other than maybe an LG C2 or C3 TV simply because we have 240 hertz 4K gaming monitors coming at pretty reasonable looking price points later in the year. I will do a separate dedicated 4K gaming monitor video where we'll go through some of them. But right now, if you want 4K, LCD really is the place to be. If you want OLED, I would go ahead and wait because it will be a different performance class coming very, very soon. What would I pick up right now? Honestly, MSI and Gigabyte kind of rule the roost right now. The first one, if you're on a budget, you're looking for standard 27 inch 4K, the MSI Mag 274 UPF, really good. These are all gonna be flat. They're all gonna be IPS. They're all gonna use very similar panels as well. So the motion handling, uh, the color on that, the color accuracy, it's all gonna come down to a little bit of calibration out of the box, which they do individually. I think th they both do a pretty good job. I really do like this monitor for $399. Again, it's 27 inch. If you want that extra inch, it's gonna cost you about $50, but this is a really good one to pick up. If you want the 28 inch, like I said, $50 more, it's the MSI Mag 281URF. 
Really phenomenal panel. Not a lot to say other than the 144 hertz refresh rate is kind of where you're gonna cap out on these. Again, until we get those OLED panels, but those are gonna be a whole lot more, almost double the price. So if you're looking, 4K right now, this is a good panel to pick up. Great alternative here from Acer, by the way. This is the XB283K, uh, 449, again, 28 inch, 150 hertz. It's the same panel. They've just slightly overclocked it. If you don't like that uh, overdrive mode, because that sometimes that can introduce a little bit of ghosting in there, you can just run it at the standard 144 hertz instead. All these are Phenomenal, and honestly, I would just pick up the cheapest one. And as we talked about, this is the Gigabyte M28U. Right now, this one's a little bit more expensive. I, I use this panel, in fact, I'm using it right now uh, to look at these selections. I find it a absolutely phenomenal panel. We have several of these. We also have several of the Samsung 4K uh, G7. However, those have just gotten way too expensive. I don't know what Samsung is doing out there. If they do come in down in price, that's another one I would definitely recommend you take a look at. But these are phenomenal panels, absolutely phenomenal, and they're all about the same price. So you can kind of really take your pick. If you're looking for a 32 inch version, I really like the Gigabyte M32U. No reason to do anything super fancy. For 649, these 4K panels are cheaper than some of the 28 inch from other vendors like Asus and others. I don't know why those are so expensive and you can pick this up for 649, about the same price as those, but this is 32 inches. Let's jump on the best ultra wide and super ultra wide 1440p gaming monitors right now. We are expecting 240 hertz version of OLED coming later, probably compressed down some of the OLED prices later, but I don't expect these LCD prices to change. So you basically either are gonna get a more budget focused 300 to $400 gaming monitor, or you're gonna spend more like seven, $800, or even a little bit more for the new 240 hertz once they come. At the LCD, my recommendations, there's basically two monitors that use the same panel and honestly, I would just get the cheaper one. There's really not that much difference between them. That's either the Gigabyte G34 WQC or the MSI version, which is always hard for me to say, MAG342CQR instead. If you're looking for flat IPS panels, I don't know where they've gone, but they're completely not available on the market right now. It seems like everything is curved VA and everything's going for around $330. Moving over to OLED 1440p ultra wide gaming monitors. Honestly, the one that I would really focus on if you don't need 240 hertz is the Alienware AW3423DWF. Now this is the best of the 34 inch panels from the quote unquote last generation. Absolutely phenomenal. I think it has a slight edge over the MSI panel as well. If you can find the MSI one for a little bit cheaper, we'll link it down in the description. That's probably a good one to pick up. This is the, the brighter of the two though. And 849, that's a little steep right now. I will probably wait until those 240 Hertz monitors came out and push the price of this one down a little bit more, especially if you don't need 240 Hertz. Phenomenal HDR on this thing. This is the one, not the G-Sync one that tends to be a little bit more expensive. This is the FreeSync one. Honestly though, either of them are absolutely amazing. The absolute best super ultra-wide 1440p gaming monitor is now the Odyssey OLED G9. I probably wouldn't get the older G9, the LCD panel, which is 240 hertz, 1440p. I'd get this instead because honestly, if you're buying this, you're buying this for a super gaming setup, let's be honest. And it's not that much more than the older LCD monitor. There are two versions of this. Actually, there's gonna be three very soon. There's the G95 SC, that this one right here, that comes with a game bar, it comes with a little processor on the monitor as well that helps with some image quality settings. It comes with a number of other features. And then there's the other version, which it seems like maybe Samsung is phasing out because it's super expensive right now, which was the G9 3SC. So I wouldn't buy the 3SC unless there's a super discount between the two. There's also another version of this monitor coming soon. It seems like just a couple of small tweaks to it. I'm not sure it's worth waiting for. If you want it, $12.99 is a pretty good price for 240 hertz, 1440p OLED at 49 inches, insane. This is the one to get. Remember, check out those gaming monitor deals linked down in the video description for pricing and availability in your region. And if you got value out of this video, give it a like, it makes a huge difference to the channel. And we'll catch you on the next one.